Dear Harstam, Zerg's ability to reproduce lost economy and deny scouting is insane! Exclamation mark. Playing against Zerg feels so coin flippy, and it's discouraging that the only way to win is protos against Zerg is with a two base all in or boring sky toss. This Zerg never did run buys or split his army, except for borrowing Lurker so he could still use Zerg's beloved F2 key. In this game, I scouted that he went super fast hatch with a quick pool and gas. Because my probe can scout the Zerg space, I had to plan for both a Link Flood and for a Roach Ravager bust. I can't scout which one it is because the Adept would just get killed by Speedlings and then I just died to a Link Flood. So I went Void Race and his Roach Ravager bust was a complete failure. Because I couldn't tell whether he was following up with drones or more Roaches and Ravagers, I decided to go DT as it could punish both a Hatch Tag, Queen Walk and stop another bust. All of these decisions were pure guesswork as I couldn't scout with my Void Race, lest my third gets destroyed by a Link Flood. I pick off the sand of Muras and I decide to go Phoenix. It turns out I'm right and he suddenly shows up with 20 Muras. Had I guessed Hydras, I would have been dead right there. Noticing he didn't go Spores, I counterattacked with DTs, hoping to buy time for Phoenix to come out. I then proceed to kill about 4 mineral lines worth of drones. No problem. 4 as those are D's. He means that he pressed the 4 button control group hotkey, which is usually where the hatchery is, then S for select larva, and then press the D button many times. Now, it probably just held down the, B, the D button once, but I understand what he's saying. He should have been dead there, but I couldn't kill him because my anti-air was too undeveloped. I kill hatcheries everywhere, but he just seemed to have infinite economy. He even goes ULTRAS, all caps, against the ground protos army, exclamation mark. Yet he still wins despite all of this. After being so inactive with his Muras, losing 4 mineral lines to DTs, losing another 60 odd drones to run bys, f everywhere and going ULTRAS, he should have been dead as dirt. But nay, exclamation mark. Please captain, this is totally imba. Is it? Or do I suck? Question mark. This is a, 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 a great little form here as really this is kind of how most stories get told, you know? Whenever you're telling a story and you're upset about something, you always leave out the things that you did, you know? It's like, yeah. So the other day I was just having dinner with Marge and all of a sudden out of nowhere she just threw a glass of wine in my face, leaving out the part where you uh, yoinked an entire lobster straight onto her plate then started throwing chairs into the air, make them into a header just to land into her food as well. So I, I feel like we're lacking a big part of the story here. All we've seen is brilliant moves out of uh, the person called Probius Corp, who is of course a Protoss and his masters uh, on the NA server, and the Zerg just being a little idiot. Now, uh, this sounds pretty unlikely to me. I... I have to say already at this point, if I read a complaint form like this, where the Protoss does everything correct and the Zerg does everything wrong, and this guy is hard stuck in Masters, I'm already thinking, I doubt that you did everything correct, my friend. But you know, as always, I am very open-minded to the possibility. Um, just perhaps a little bit more skeptical than I usually am, just because of how his complaint form was was worded and you know the, the structure of it with him being the complete hero and the zerg being the complete idiotic villain so um, yeah i'm curious to see what's gonna happen here oh look at that <clears throat> 14 hatchery now this is a cool little move here out of uh, yeast it was a nice name as well i like that yeast um and this is for sure is going to confuse the the mediocre-minded Protoss player, but of course not Probius Corp, as he is uh, definitely not mediocre-minded, at least not uh, what he wants us to believe. Now, the 14 hatchery, worse economically than the 16 hatchery, means you get the hatchery before the Overlord. This allows you to always get the hatchery down before the nasty Protoss comes over and blocks that hatchery with, with the probe, uh, forcing you to take 
this base as your natural or this base as your natural so actually a pretty cool little move something that a lot of pro players did for a while um the problem is is because it's worse than 16 hatchery if the protoss decides to go for a no scout you're just in a bit of a bad spot as a zerg because um, you're sacrificing a bunch of eco but it is definitely playable and it makes the games very consistent because you always open up with this hatchery over here now on top of that, he follows it up with a very fast... Actually, this is really rapid speed. So, um, yeah, this speed is going to finish at, what, the 310 mark? Ooh, and straight road for and So I like this build order here out of uh, yeast, honestly. I'm a big fan. Now, um, technically, the Protoss could have scouted it, but it is really tight with the link timing. And, I mean, he just gives up the probe for free now. I, I kind of understand what he's saying okay i kind of understand what he's saying now i have a, a word of advice here for all tosses around the world and also for probius core if you're afraid of a cheese and you're not sure what it's going to be a really cool thing that you can do is rather than letting your probe die for free on the ramp which might have seemed like a good decision at a time you know you're like oh you see a ramp it's a nice burial site for this probe yeah i could just let it die here to the two links that never would be able to catch if, if i just sent the probe over here rather than doing that what you could do is you could actually send the probe over here it stays alive you move down to the tower then you check this third base and then you check this third base and even though you're not going to get any direct confirmation that it is indeed going to be an all-in what you can get is indirect confirmation that your opponent or well direct confirmation that your opponent is stuck on two bases because he doesn't have a third base if there's no third base the likelihood of there being an all-in does kind of increase on top of that he wasn't sure whether it was going to be a roach all-in or a ling all-in and because he was afraid he would die to link speed the beauty with the probe is is that you can kind of run around being chased by links in front of your opponent's base imagine if it would still be alive that probe right it would just be here link speed isn't being isn't being built right now because yeast went for straight roaches this means that your probe just would have seen these roaches move out right and if it would have seen link speed it would have seen link speed so you would have gotten to see it sure you would have lost the probe but you also lost the probe now when you got no information so rather than just losing the probe without anything you get some info for it and that can only be a good thing in my mind um and i also think if you're playing against two base if he would have scouted that it was just two base getting a battery and going into stargate is always a safe play and will always uh what is this holy crap what is this wall uh, um, getting a stargate always will allow you to stay alive with a battery just make sure you try to have a super battery alive as well and that would definitely help oh this is brilliant oh but i've never seen this before but look at this he can basically play musical chairs here with the wall and wherever the bios are he'll just walk to the different wall i don't think this was done on purpose but this is actually kind of useful in this type of situation like he could if, if, he gets biled here he just walks to the next wall well he doesn't do that but he could have done that in theory that is actually pretty cool also, that first Void Ray is pretty late. I don't know why, but it's just late by 15 seconds or so. Of course, he's still going to hold really easily because, let's be real, he has a full wall. He had a battery. Quick tip, by the way. When you see this orange marker, that doesn't indicate a spot where you need to move your units. That actually indicates the spot where the bile, these things that are now going up in the air, will fall down into okay so um try to move your units away rather than to stack as many on the same spot as possible just a quick tip there for for all all the tosses well everyone really out there so um he did it correct with the stalker but the adept just stayed there it's a little bit of a mistake um another thing also is that usually you want to focus on one units rather than trying to kill all roaches and ravagers at the same time by making sure they all get red health the, one of the main things in StarCraft is to lower your opponent's damage output as fast as possible. And a good way to do that is to focus units one by one, especially if there's very little units. Because the longer they stay alive, the more damage they get to do, obviously. 
I like that he finished the pylon here. Um, there's no real use, but still, you know, the extra safety. You can never be safe enough. This is a double bagger. We can feel it already, you know? This is a this is a double bagger. I've never actually seen someone double bag. I've heard people speak of double bagging, but I've never seen it in real life yet. Um, maybe I should move to wherever Pro B score is living because I just stake out the local grocery store and aha, there we have him. Two void rays do find uh, the Overlord. Also, I'd like to note that despite the fact that Pro B score completely stopped this push um, without taking massive, well, he took some damage. He still is probably not in a brilliant spot, right? He is, um, he sure has some map control with these void rays. His opponent is getting a double expansion, has a lot of money in the bank. There's 47 workers, like, is not super brilliant. Um, and I think this is because he wasn't producing workers all the way throughout. Um, his third base uh, never really got started quickly afterwards either. He still full walled out himself. And he probably was floating a fair amount of money during that push as well. I didn't see it, but I can only imagine. Because otherwise he would have had more crap at this point. I also feel like there might have been a couple of probe cuts. Because it doesn't seem right that he only has 44 workers 6 minutes into the game. Did he lose any workers? No, he lost 2. So technically he should have 48. Now I'm pretty sure you can have like 58 at this point. Maybe even 60. I think I'm actually fully saturated at six minutes, but at my third. But we'll, you know, we'll leave it for now. We'll leave it for now. I'm not gonna put the put the bar too high here. We are dealing with an American, and we're dealing with a Masters player. And, and these two in combination are can be very dangerous. They're actually the most dangerous kind of uh, American, the American Master, because they they have the belief that they understand the game, so they start making their own builds and their own shenanigans, you know. And before you know it, they invade another country again. So you always got to be, uh, yeah, you got to be very, very careful here with the American masters. Okay, <clears throat> charge being researched. Forge is here as well. I like these things. I, I genuinely do like these things. This is good play. Um, we're lacking some obvious vision. This is one of the themes that came back in the in the balance complaint forms. This was a a, them, a thematic, thematic, yeah, thematic complaint for me. I had a lot about the lack of scouting and the ability to reproduce. That's that's mainly what it was about. And Protoss doesn't have an easy time scouting, but we do have a couple of tools for scouting. And none of these tools are three void rays and six adapts. No, the tools are an observer, hallucination, and an oracle. And Phoenix, I'll also count. And in the early game, an adapt, you can use it. He didn't build any of these and then started complaining about scouting. This is like not inventing radar um, and then complaining that uh, that you don't know whether planes are coming or where the boats are, you know? Like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, just invent radar technology. It's, it's, it's not that difficult, my friends. Bats have the same as well. I've actually once uh, heard a story. This could be completely fabricated, so take this with a grain of salt. So most of the things I say are completely fabricated. I once heard that uh, the American military, the guys who made the, the radar technology, couldn't believe that bats also were capable of doing similar things because it was such sophisticated technology that they, they wouldn't allow it, you know? They were like, there's no way this is true. That was the story. I know it wasn't very good. Um, these two void rays also aren't doing a very good job. They now went into the main base, lost one of their brothers, then started focusing an extractor, and then... As it almost died, swapped onto one of the queens that got transfused by his transfused by his friends. So, wait, didn't this guy say that he sniffed out the mudas? I'm gonna have to read this again. What did you say? Control F. I pick off the scent of mudas and decide to go phoenix. Did he have a phoenix before this already? He had one phoenix already. Okay. Yeah. He had one. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'll, I'll give you that. Decide to go phoenix. Okay. I, I, I can feel that. To be fair, having a blind phoenix is always good. I, For a second I thought that he... When he said picking off the sand, he meant I got attacked by Muralisk. 
This is like getting mauled by a bear and then going, I'm picking up the scent of a bear. I feel like I should get my bear spray out. But no, he actually already had a phoenix out. You know what? You win this one, Probius Core. You beat my analogy before it even got out of my mouth. I love this DT run by. Now, this is a banger. Uh, this is great. Sends in seven DTs. Imagine just having the money to spend on seven DTs. Then you know you've been a good saver, you know? It's like uh, when I was a young boy, I had saved a lot of money, me and my brother together. And then once the Game Boy Color got out, we could buy it together with Pokemon Silver. And we felt very good about ourselves. Probius Score managed to do the same thing now. He just warped in 70 DTs when he needed them the most. He was like, damn, that's a cool Game, game Boy Color. I can buy that. And he is, those, those are cool 70 DTs. Let me just warp them and run them across the map. He's actually doing a crap ton of damage. My favorite part of all of this, though, is not the fact that he could afford 70 DTs or the fact that he killed, like, infinite workers. No. It is that during all of this... He didn't build any more phoenixes. So first he picked off the scent of phoenixes, remember? He smelled them. Then he was getting mauled by Muras as he moved across the map. And then as his DTs were keeping his opponent busy, he decided that the best course of action was to completely idle my Stargate for the next minute. And just start, warping, start building immortals instead. Because the thing that we really need, if there's only flying units on the map, is a, is a unit that deals well with ground units that are armored. That is just a brilliant call. And this is the type of call you don't really see anymore um, past the American Masters level. I did a good job at the harass. You know, I'm going to give you that. You're in a fine spot. Um, starts once again. You have cannons, batteries. Good setup. No fort base, by the way. My man is on 80 workers. Fantastic economy. Um, he is outmining his opponent because he just killed like 50 workers, but he's on three bases. Now, very often if you have 80 workers, you might want to consider getting a fourth base. Um, as right now, most of your probes are just doubling onto your third. Like, you're actually double saturated almost. Yeah, it's impressive. Fourth base goes down. You lose every single Phoenix to the Muralis. Or like, Phoenixes are good against Muralis, but you do need to control them. Which, what do you think that stalker was thinking as his friends were just standing around admiring the unboldable rocks? Okay, boys, how about you help me as well? I like this counter. Do I like this counter attack? I actually don't like this counter attack at all. No. I, it's, it's a counter attack that is meant to kill workers um, because there's no ground units. But because there's no ground units, five zealots would have done probably the exact same thing. Except in that case, you wouldn't have lost the stalkers. I'm also impressed by uh, Probius here. That he can warp in, what is it, like 20 stalkers without getting blink or without starting blink. And just kind of using them as a stupid zealot. Like, so far they haven't really achieved much of anything. After realizing that his Phoenix control isn't quite what it used to be back in the day, throws down a fleet beacon to get the range upgrades. I approve of that move. I approve of that move. I feel you as well with your Phoenix micro not being what it used to be. Um, honestly, you've done a lot of damage, but you've also thrown away a lot of armies at this point. And you haven't really transitioned into an army that is great at dealing with large numbers of Muras, except uh, at least not with the control that you've been showcasing so far. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of everything. Sorry, do you have plus one? I wouldn't mind plus one either on the Phoenixes at this point. It tends to be very, very useful. Your control here is quite good, I have to admit as well. Like, you're, uh, you're controlling this well. Y you really are. Also, as there's no... Uh, spores yet, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, like a single DT being sent by. Very often in lower levels, people believe that DTs are only useful when you warp in 12. But actually, if you send a single DT to a base without any detection, you're most likely going to get a lot of workers anyway. And often what's better is to split DTs up rather than to send all of them to the same base. Um, you see, these two bases do have detection, but the outside bases don't. 74 workers once again for the Zerg. So the Zerg actually is macroing up while he's playing. He's, he's doing quite well. This is a very good run by. Um, well, okay. 
the idea behind it was very good okay this is the okay i when i said this is a very good run by i didn't know you just walk straight into your opponent's vision this is like if frodo were on his way to mount doom and the uh, entire time he's just screaming i have the ring hello i have the ring like this is not really how it's supposed to go you know lord of the rings would be a very different movie if that was the case if if frodo had like 12 iq you just literally walk through a watchtower to attack this base i like the idea though of sending out rumbais against muralisk ling because it forces the muralists to come home because links don't trade too well against uh, against salads rather very often so um of course there's some hydras there as well but they have crappy upgrades Unless there's like roaches or bane links, zealots tend to trade pretty well by themselves. You don't even really need to pay attention to it. Uh, I like this move. Um, once again, I would have preferred to see them split or just to have one send in, but it's not necessarily a bad move. At this point, the, the, the Zerg is actually, I think, slightly ahead it's because he's been trading better and because he's actually been mining from multiple bases most of the time. So like the Zerg before this happened, actually I think was in a good spot, even though it seems like all of the things the Zerg did kind of fell flat, um, but he did do some damage and he kept you on three base for a long time. So the game is, I think it's it's honestly kind of evenish at this point. Upgrades are fine for the Zerg. Um, yeah, I, I, I really don't mind this too much. Do you have the range upgrades yet? Okay, you have any impulse. I still wouldn't mind seeing a plus one upgrade here. Um, you don't have a cyber core, do you? Yeah, you don't. It was in the front, it died, and then you never rebuild it. Okay, makes some sense. Um, now, at this point, as your opponent is transitioning into a more Ling Bane style, I'd recommend getting Storm. You're getting a Templar Archives, it's a good thing. Uh, I do enjoy the Trobius score. The game slows down a little bit here. You get a very big zealot army. I'm not even sure how that's possible that you have this many zealots in an army. Why do you get so little gas? Okay, well, you're not mining from this gas. That doesn't help. Maybe you were late on the gases on the fort as well. Uh, you were pretty late. They just started mining. Now, whenever you have zealots in your army and your opponent has bane links, you, you kind of got to think of how these armies interact with one another, okay? Like... If you have 30 Zealots and they're fighting 10 Banelings, you're not going to trade well. Like, most likely, all your Zealots will die and all of his Banelings will die. If you have 5 Zealots and he has 10 Banelings, all of your Zealots will die and all of his Banelings will die as well. So what we learn here is that in order to get rid of Banelings, it's best to not run in with big clumps of units that are easily splashed upon. Runbys are a very good tool, especially runbys that go unspotted. Now, once again, I do appreciate you announcing where you are, but you're straight up walking into towers, but this does make it a lot easier to get spotted. So, try to send one unit to a tower first. I also, in theory, I like this move, okay, where you send a runby to the right side and then push a different spot, a different location. Uh, however, um, as your first run by got completely blasted, right now the Zerg can just actually send his entire army to deal with this force. And let's be real, this force isn't the biggest force I've seen in my life. Um, especially against Banelings, it is really tricky to fight with heavy Zealot compositions. So we see Banelings just trade so darn well against Zealots, and then the Hydras should be capable of cleaning up the rest of your army. Um, this is a good run by if it was doing anything um what's gonna happen is look at this he realizes his main army died he's gonna pay attention to the minimap in 15 seconds from now oh he just did and now he sends it in after his entire army died once again allowing the zerg to respond to it without having to deal with any other threat this is what i call fake multitasking this is setting up uh groups of run buys but only using them after your other thing that you were controlling died or has pulled back it is completely useless because the main thing about multitasking or about having multiple groups attacking at the same time is that it's really difficult to split off in the moment like it's just extremely difficult for all races this is true across the board 
uh, but also really for Zerg because you have a complicated army. Look at this army. This is an army that right now is Lurker, Hydra, Ling. Like, if there's 10 Zealots here, what do you send there? Do you want to have a Lurker there? Can you just send, like, what, 20 Links and 5 Hydras? It's probably not enough. You need to send a decent amount. By the time that these units arrive, this base might have gone down already as well. It's difficult to split an army. However, if there's just 10 Zealots there and the rest of the army just got killed, you go, well, I'll just send my entire army there, like nice you know it's it's all good so when you're when you're trying to do run buys try to at least have them semi-synchronized you know um something you can do if you're struggling with this this is going to be a hot tip here okay listen listen to this hot tip as you storm your own observer and your own zealots do manage to win this fight holy crap you have a lot of templar this was a good fight for you I almost uh, glossed over my whole tip, but I'm gonna give it after this fight, okay? Don't go anywhere. Okay, listen to this whole tip. Imagine you have a main army here, which you do, okay? And you want to start pushing into this area, but you know you have crappy, you have crappy m control of of multitasking or just of your army in general so you only need to focus on your army what you can do is you can just rally five zealots with a massive attack move command and you just go on the minimap you go like a move a move a move a move and you just a move a couple of things and you make sure that the run by arrives while you are fighting so you send the run by from here pretty far away and it will take like 20 to 30 seconds they just start moving to the watchtower and you start doing things like clearing a bit of creep throwing a storm on this army and then while you're fighting your zealot run by arrives and the zealot run by will take care of stuff you know by itself like zealots are really good um, while they're not being micro they're even better while they are being micro um a lot of top Protoss player will make you believe that that's not the case and that when you leave Zealots alone, they do their best job. You know, they don't want to be those micro managers, but um, it's completely fine to just let them work by themselves. Just a move in a certain pattern and then start controlling your main army. It's not really multitasking, but it is a run by and it is, it is a setup that works really well. Very often what I see is that people send in the run by first gets cleaned up and then after they see that a run by died they start moving in with their main army so like this is exactly the type of move that i was talking about this is brilliant except this could have just been zealots zealots are really good when not controlled dts are even better but dts are super expensive and they're kind of similar to to zealots anyway you know they're a ground unit that probably doesn't escape so you'd rather have cheap units on top of that the zerg is on 98 workers is mining a crap ton of money and the resources lost is still pretty close. So you do really need to start doing some damage. And now you see your DTs are starting to do some damage. Um, they take out the base. Zerg needs to split off units. This is annoying for the Zerg. If right now you would be moving forward here, I think you could just pretty much blast this little army that is here. It's what, five lurkers? You have an observer, you have a crap ton of zealots. You could lift two of these, uh, uh, one of these uh, lurkers. Look. He's really struggling with it. This is what I'm talking about. Run buys are just difficult to deal with because you don't quite know what is there or what is going to be there in the future. Um, your army composition also sucks. You need a second robotics facility for more immortal production against the Lurker Ultra Army, which is not really an army. Like th This is always so funny to me when people complain about... Oh my good lord. What was that fight? There was no support there. It was just lurkers. Oh, this is why I sent one unit to the tower first. If there's lurkers there, they'll show themselves. Oh my god. Well, painful. Painful. I wonder how you lost this game. Good lord. There's like 50 supply there for free. You get like half a lurker. Uh, okay, a anyway, what, I was gonna, what was I gonna say? I had a good thought in my head. Right, I think you complained about the fact that he goes ultras against a ground protos army. What an idiot. Now, this is the type of argument where you actually own yourself. It is a complete self-own. If he manages to kill your army with ultras even though you have a full ground army 
it is probably your army composition that sucks even more. How can you not understand that? Like, if you have an army that consists of mass Templar, Zealot, Archon, and almost no Immortals, and you die against Ultras, then you can't say, what an idiot for being Ultras. No, you're the idiot for not building enough Immortals. Like, it's a, it's a complete cell phone. And the fact that you didn't realize that makes me doubt that you actually have double-digit IQ. Um, Phoenix comes home, I like that. Like, you can say a lot about this Zerg, but this Zerg is making plays. He really is. Attacking left, right, and center. Um, different unit compositions. He doesn't have to at all. This is a run-by. He's been doing run-bys. He's been splitting off his army when he has been getting harassed. Like, this Zerg has actually been playing quite well. Sure, his creep friend wasn't brilliant. Some of, his, some of his fights have been mediocre. His dealings with harass hasn't been perfect, but he's kind of outplaying you, my friend. And so far, the only person that actually dealt with harass by splitting off units actually was this Zerg player. You say that he kept F2-ing, but... You have freaking phoenixes and observers all in the same move command. Like, yeah, you're not F2-ing, though, because the phoenix sometimes flows behind. I'm not even sure why you're still controlling the phoenix at this point. I do like the dedication to your army, but uh, I say just let it patrol some area and pretend you forgot about it, you know? You don't want to be controlling a phoenix when you're fighting a ground army like this. Once again, slightly too many zealots, so you want to split off like seven or eight off. Go to this base. Once again, Zerg splitting off part of his army to go for harass. It's looking quite good. Like, honestly, the Zerg is pretty decent. I really do believe the Zerg is pretty decent. This base. You have too little Immortals. You have too many Zealots. Not enough Archons really either. Sure, you don't have a lot of money. Uh, that's because you also haven't been expanding enough. You also have pretty poor map vision this entire game. I don't think you one managed to occupy a tower. Now you get chased by Ultras. Lurkers, Banings. Good fight by you, though. Really nice storms. Pretty decent target fire as well with the Immortals. And you manage to uh, conserve most of your Zealots. So, after a fight like this, rather than always sending DTs across the map, just go for like a 5 Zealot run by just go like bang, bang, bang. You know, on the mini-map? I just pinged that. You just, boom, go to that watchtower and then you walk into that, into that spine and you don't even really have to look at it. Just go for it, man. Meanwhile, while you're doing that, you take the gases here. You probably have to take another base because currently you have 49 workers um, on this base. Now, I am a person that does like oversaturation every now and again, but this is pushing it even for me. And you give up this base. Because, okay, who is F2-ing now, baby? Who is F2-ing now? What is this? So he sees two lurkers here, and he sees three lurkers here. And I think this was a response to the lurkers over here, actually. Now he pulls away the works. He's like, oh crap, I'm out of position. I think he pulled himself out of position and then pretended like he wanted to give up this build. Because at this point in his mind, he's already hatching the plan to send this into Iotis. I can feel it. I've got a, kind of a, a sixth sense for that at this point. Well, I already have a regular sixth sense, so more of a seventh sense, I would say. Now, his army is still quite dangerous. He has a pretty big army. Um, however, the Zerg army is just a lot larger. And, no, uh, just a lot larger. I think at this point, more stuff just beats less stuff. There's 14 Ultralisk against 4 Immortals. This Zerg could probably fall asleep at his keyboard and still win this game at this point. Um, and he isn't falling asleep. That's the beauty of this. He's not falling asleep whatsoever. He's just A, moving across the map. And he's going to take you out. That's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Hop. Hop, good control out of uh, you, by the way. Your, your micro in these fights is really not that bad. It's, uh, you know how to keep an army alive. This fight that you just took, honestly, I, I kind of like that. Your control in general hasn't been too bad. It's just the decision making of where to fight and what army and where to fight with what part of your army. Like, very often the Zealots are in the wrong place. You had a really bad fight over here where you just kind of didn't pay attention for 10 seconds or so, but that happens to the best, you know? Um, I once remember there was a clip on Reddit where an entire Zerg army 
got nuked by a Terran. And there was one guy in the comments who said, this is why Terran is so ridiculous. You don't pay attention for your to your army for 30 seconds, and just like that, you lose the game. And at first I was like, yeah, that is kind of ridiculous. And I was like, wait, what? Probably if you don't pay attention to your army for 30 seconds, surely you deserve to lose the game. Like, what kind of idiot are you to not pay attention to your army for 30 seconds? And I feel like that's what, kind of what happened here with that fight, you know? At first I'm like, you know, that's tricky. Lurkers are pretty good. I'm like, wait... You saw that fight going south for like five or six seconds already. And you're just sitting there going like, oh, that seems pretty all right. Good kiting. Really nice kiting with these, with these immortals. The Zerg's engagements haven't really been that hot. And you're actually doing a fantastic job. You're making this game close and I'm impressed. Like, okay, this is, this is good. You're actually doing a unit lost is probably, yeah, it's going into your favor now. It actually is going into your favor. Oh, that was a bad recall. You could have gotten this. I think you're just afraid of lurkers. I too would be afraid of lurkers. I've seen you engage into them. <gasps> nice. Pulls the probes back as well. I like it. No mining though. Which is why I didn't like the recall. Because it, you're really working with a situation where things are getting worse and worse for you, right? And your opponent just gave you an opportunity to pick up four lurkers for free. And you decided to pass it on so you could go back home. That's not really the way it's supposed to be. I can assure you that. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Now you're doing a salad run by, but this is not the time anymore. Just keep your army together, my friend. Yeah, I think this is going to be kind of the final fight. These lurkers actually should be coming home at this point. These should be coming home too. Zerg is still mining, though. I, I, <laughs> Zerg actually needs to be really careful. He really could lose this. Yeast. Comes into a oh the lurker flank. I like that. I like that move. Yep. And now with the ultras in the back. Okay. Yeah. This is gonna clean it up finally. So Toss does end up dying. A uh, painful death. I mean, no income still. And we have a base here. We have another base going up here. Lurker defense there. I love it. Having 14 workers and four on one gas. <laughs> That's big. <laughs> Especially because you already have 1500 gas. I like that move. I do like that move a lot. Come on, Proby. It's over. Like, okay, this is just a little bit pathetic and it's wasting my time. Like, what is this? You know your opponent still has a base and is mining. You have two immortals. You know the other guy has lurkers, hydras, and ultras. And you have two immortals. Like, do, do you really believe this is going to work? Like, actually. Do you truly believe... That with these two immortals, you can do what you couldn't do with five immortals and two zealots. It is just so difficult for me to understand this type of behavior. But you're going to camp at the cannons while you're long distance mining with seven probes. Like you must have dropped out of like third grade mathematics or something. If you don't understand that your opponent is out mining you. Like you need to go. There's been a, there's been a freaking timer on top of your head for the past eight minutes. And you're pretending that it isn't there. Like, the bomb has already exploded. Your limbs are off. Hey, it's time to die now, my friend. Um, yeah, GG. Probably a score leaves the game. Okay, so your main concerns here, your main problems were with um, the Zerg's ability to reproduce lost economy and deny scouting. Okay? Well, to reproduce lost economy, yeah. Zerg is pretty decent at reproducing lost economy. They can rebuild anything very quick. That is uh, something that is inherent to the Zerg race, and it's one of the reasons why they're capable of being competitive. If they would be uh, like the other races, they wouldn't be capable of being competitive because their units are just a lot worse. They, they need that ability. This is what kind of makes it balanced. Like, uh, on top of that, it's not like he actually got a heading economy. He got... Uh, ahead in bases you were up in workers for the majority of the game the problem was you were on three bases while having 80 workers or on four bases while having 85 while two of them are already mined out you were just way too slow with expanding the problem here wasn't so much with the worker count it was with the base count and when it comes to the base count what is stopping you from taking extra bases nothing so on that point, on, on, on the reproducing lost economy, I'd say, yes, they're fast at it, but that wasn't the issue. Y you missed the issue here. Like, the issue was the basis. 
not the drones. So on that, I'm going to give you a big fat no, a deny. <clears throat> then when it comes to denying scouting, well, he didn't even really try to deny scouting so much as you're just giving yourself like these mental blocks where it's like, oh, there might be speed or there might be roaches and I can't figure out what it is. Sometimes you don't need to figure out what it is. You just need to figure out what it is not. It was not a third base. So building a battery is fine. And getting a void ray is fine. You did those two things and you survived. Like, you would have survived against both the Link Flood and against the Ravager. So why are you complaining? Like, that part of the game went very well for you. That was probably one of the only parts in the game that went very well for you. It's discouraging that the only way to win as Protoss against Zerg is with a two base all in or boring Skytos. This game could have been win in like a million different ways. As they say, uh, all roads lead to Rome, except perhaps the road that you picked, because that one led to Atlantis. Like, you're dead under the sea, my friend. I'm not sure what you were doing, but you never rebuilt your Cybercore after it got taken out at like the 14 minute mark against Mutalisk, which didn't allow you to build a second Robo to pump out more Immortals, which was the one unit that would absolutely would have won you the game. Um, your army composition in general was way too salad heavy because you were lacking that gas from a fifth base, a faster fourth base. So you kind of dug your own grave, uh, built your own coffin, then jumped in the coffin and laid in your grave. And then all of a sudden you're surprised that you find yourself in a grave in a coffin. It's like, well, this is, you know, this is what you did, my friend. Well, like, I can't help you anymore from here on out. Like, the Zerk isn't broken. The Zerk made a lot of mistakes but you made way more mistakes and the biggest mistake was just never expanding and well th that one fight against the lurkers also wasn't it so my friend zerk isn't broken zerk isn't too good at denying scouting they aren't too good at reproducing drones you just suck and that's the hard reality i'm sorry all right that's going to be it for today's episode of is it imba or do i suck if you enjoyed it be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 200,000 subscribers, uh, only 130,000 away. So be sure to subscribe now and get that ticket uh, for the big lottery that we will have at 200,000 subscribers. Um, don't forget to hit the like button as well as uh, this was a funny video. And we'll see you all next time for more videos. Bye bye.